My name is Sean Civic, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco. This video will demonstrate DNA Center's plug and play feature using a Catalyst 9300 switch. Plug and play allows for zero touch provisioning of network devices. This allows you to simply unbox a brand new switch, plug it in, and power it on. DNA Center will provision the configuration of the switch as well as update firmware for you automatically. You no longer need to pre stage equipment by manually copying and pasting configs or uploading the correct firmware before you rack and stack. This can save you a lot of time as well as make your job a whole lot easier. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is configure the uplink switch ports. My brand new Catalyst 9300 will plug into the uplink switch called FS2-Switch on ports 10 gig 113 and 114, which are both configured in port group 1. The port channel is configured as a trunk with native VLAN 999. If you only have one uplink, it's not necessary to use port channeling, I just wanted to show that functionality. Now by default, the new switch will attempt to connect to the PNP server on VLAN 1. However, I want to use VLAN 35 as my management VLAN in this example, so I'll add the PNP startup VLAN 35 command to the uplink switch. This will instruct the new switch to use VLAN 35 to communicate with DNA Center instead of the default of VLAN 1. The new switch will need to know how to locate the DNA Center server. It can use DNS with an A record pointing to pnpserver.yourdomain, DHCP option 43, or even the cloud to find the IP address of DNA Center. In this demo, we'll be using DHCP. I've set up a Windows DHCP server with scope option 43 pointing to 172.21.21.10, which is the IP address of my DNA Center server. Now that our upslink switch is configured and DHCP is set up, we can power on our new switch. Here is a screenshot taken while booting up the Catalyst 9300. As you can see, there is no startup config and the switch is starting auto install, plug and play zero touch provisioning. It's important that we do not enter anything at the initial configuration prompt because that will halt the PNP process. We can also see the DHCP settings received such as the IP address, domain name, DNS server, and vendor specific option 43 pointing to our DNA Center server that we've configured earlier. A quick side note, if you'd like to run PNP on an existing switch or one that has already been configured, you do have to perform some device cleanup. You'd have to remove the PNP profile, any certificates on the switch, VLANs, and the startup config. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to jot down these steps. It's good to be able to test the process out on an existing switch before rolling out a new switch into production. Now that the switch is booted up and started PNP, we'll claim the switch in DNA Center to complete the provisioning process. However, before we claim the switch, I'll go over the details of how DNA is set up and configured. I'll click on the hamburger icon, Design, Network Hierarchy. This is where I can design or logically group network settings according to my environment. Anything at the global level will apply to all levels underneath it. However, I can always overwrite those for site-specific settings, which gives you very granular control of the automation process. In this example, I've set up a site named PNP Site, which contains a building called PNP Building, which contains one floor called PNP Floor. And this is where I'll be deploying the Catalyst 9300 switch. Clicking on the hamburger menu, Design and Network Settings, is where I can set additional settings to be pushed to network devices. I can configure things like AAA servers, DHCP servers, DNS servers, NTP servers, the time zone, as well as a message of the day. Clicking on device credentials is where I can set up CLI credentials, SNMP credentials for both versions 2 and version 3, as well as HTTPS credentials. Clicking on telemetry allows me to set up additional parameters, such as setting DNA Center as an SNMP trap server, a syslog server, a NetFlow collector, as well as monitor wired clients, which is setting up IP device tracking on switches. Clicking on the hamburger menu, design, image repository, is where I can import and maintain all the firmware images for my environment. I can set a golden image at the global level and I can even overwrite that golden image at the site-specific level. Clicking on the hamburger menu, design, and network profiles 
is where I can set up network profiles to logically group network settings based on their location. In this example, I have a PMP profile, and when I click on Edit, this is where I can configure the templates that will be used to push out to the network devices. In this example, I have one called PMP Template. Going back to the network profile, I'll then assign that profile to a site. As you can see here, this PMP profile is assigned to the PMP site, so any devices in the PMP site will get assigned this PMP profile, thus we'll get assigned that PMP template. So let's take a look at that template by clicking on the hamburger menu, Tools, Template Editor. My PNP template is located in the Onboarding Configuration Project folder. When I edit the template, I can see the settings that will be pushed to my Catalyst 9300. In this example, I'll create VLAN 10 for data, a VLAN 11 for voice, and VLAN 35 for management. I'll also create an SVI for VLAN 35, with a static IP address of 10.35.35.10. I'll also configure a default gateway of 10.35.35.1. Now PNP will create the port channel as well as allow VLAN 35 on the trunk because it was specified as the PNP startup VLAN that we configured earlier. However, we'll have to use the template to add additional VLANs, which is shown here by adding VLANs 10 and 11 to the allow list. PNP will also configure the lowered numbered port to be in the channel group, which was 10.113 in our example. However, we'll also have to use the template to add port 10.114 to the channel group as well. But because we have IP device tracking enabled, which was illustrated in the telemetry settings earlier, We'll set interface 10.114 to default before adding it to the channel group. In addition to those settings, I'll also configure all other switched ports to be in Access Ports VLAN 10 and Voice VLAN 11 with PortFast enabled, and I'll also configure Spanning Tree PortFast BPTU Guard as default. There's a lot more you can accomplish with templates, which can be very powerful. This is a very basic template without any variables just used to demonstrate onboarding a switch. I'll dive deeper into templates in another video. In order to onboard a device, you have to claim it within DNA Center. I do this by clicking on the hamburger menu, provision, plug and play. As you can see, I have two unclaimed devices, WLC1 and switch. I wanna onboard the switch, so I'm gonna highlight this one and click actions and claim. Now I'm going to give it a device name, which is the host name of the switch. I'm going to call it PNP switch. Then you can see the serial number and the product ID. Now I have to select a site. If you remember, I had a PNP template assigned to the PNP profile, and the PNP profile was assigned to the PNP site. Now I'm going to select the PNP building, which is part of that site, to get the template. When I click on Next, now we can see the device name, the serial number, the product ID, the assigned site, and the configuration. In this example, it's going to push a new image as well as a template. In order to save time, I'm going to skip the firmware upgrade and just push the template. So then I click on Next, and now we come to the templates. I select the template, and mine was pretty basic. I didn't have any variables, so I'm just going to hit Next. Now you can see the device name, the serial number, product ID, assigned site, what configuration is going to be pushed, and you can also preview the day zero configuration. Here we have the CLI name that's going to be pushed, and the SNMP credentials, as well as the enable password and the host name. We also have the device details specific to this, this, this actual switch, and then the image details, if you remember, I unchecked the firmware upgrade, and these are the actual settings that will be pushed from the template. Then we can also look at the network settings, which is basically in my situation, I'm just pushing everything toward DNA Center. Then I click on Claim and click Yes. This process takes about two minutes, so I'll pause the video and come back when it's complete. Okay, it looks like it's complete and provisioned successfully, so I can find that by clicking on the Provision tab. And we can see that the PMP switch has been provisioned. I can then click on the hamburger menu provision and inventory. Then I can go down to the PNP site. 
And this is where I can see my PNP switch. I can also use DNA Center to verify the configuration was pushed correctly. I'll click on PNP switch and configuration. And here's where I can review the, the running configuration of my switch. You can see a host name is PNP switch. I scroll past the certificates. I see I have spanning tree, port fast, BPU to guard. Here are my VLANs. Everything looks correct. And I'll scroll down. As you can see, my interfaces were set up to VLAN 10 and voice VLAN 11, as well as my interfaces for my port channel. So that pretty much wraps up the plug and play provisioning of new network devices. Thank you for watching.